Well, it's my great pleasure now to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Alvin Chia, who's the head of the Centre for Army Lessons Learned with the Singapore Army. Welcome to our discussions at the conference. Thank you. Can you tell me about your centre, the Centre for Army Lessons Learned? What are you doing in Singapore? Um, the centre was set up in 2010, October, so it's still quite in an infancy stage of uh, um, build-up. So. A uh, platform like the International Lesson Learns Conference is a great place for me to come to learn, um, to, to find out from uh, where others have walked that path that uh, you know, where pitfalls or uh, where not to go. Um, so this is a great place for me not to, uh, to come to where I can learn and not relearn some of the lessons that some people have gone through. Um, I think as we build up the both in terms of capacity and the capability for the uh, Singapore Army at least um, to learn both from the some of the operations that's taking place outside of Singapore at the same time to be able to put in processes and establish our own uh, uh, thinking and how we can contextualize some of these lessons for our own uh, our use and vice versa. And why did Singapore decide to set up such a centre? What was the catalyst for that decision? Well, I think in a, it, it's not that the army doesn't learn, uh, but for a long time we realized that um, uh, as one of the uh, kind of hit me in one of the discussion when we talk about um, uh, learning the lessons for operational planners, learning for and what kind of hit me was that a lot of the time all our reports would contain insights will contain recommendations and we always ask the question so so what happened after this and where where did all this lesson go was it really institutionalized so these are some of the key questions and very important questions that the singapore army is kind of asking say okay do we really need to to think through as a process as a structure as some of the facilities how can we then better make sure that uh, some of this lessons that we glean from exercises on operation get institutionalized into the army the rest the mainstream it be for training or for the next operation that we want to do that's so interesting because even though this series of international conferences are called lessons learned really everybody here is interested in putting things into action aren't they it's not just about learning can you tell me from what you've been hearing at the conference what has been of interest to you and it's got you thinking that might be useful for you when you go back to Singapore? Well, as I said just now, I think what really jumped out um, in one of the sessions was regarding the lessons for the operational planner. And, and, and the, the part about um, turning a recommendation to an action, that really hit me. And here, I think the, 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 the speaker was talking about having the leadership support having the leadership endorsement, having the leadership to do the tasking. Mm -hmm. Because this is one of the challenges I set up the, the, the centre, is that, okay, the authority doesn't come from me. The authority doesn't come from Lieutenant Colonel Elvin Chad that says that this is something the army wants to do. Yeah. The authority has come from a forum, a chairman, a leader in the army, fairly senior, that says that this is what the army wants to do, it's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Everybody has agreed that, okay, is this the way they want to go? And we had to just make that decision right or wrong, well, we'll figure out along the way. But is this an issue important enough for us to say that, yeah, we need to put some resource, we need to put some manpower attention to this and say that is this something that we want to work it out? Uh, endorsement and commitment at the very top and then resources to enable uh, people like yourself to put it into action. That is one key lesson. You, the theme of the conference is transitions. So everyone's been talking about... Uh, that time when after a disaster or after a period of conflict, uh, civil and military people leave a nation, how do we leave it so everything's going to be okay when we leave? Has, has the Singapore Army been involved in that sort of transition challenge? Um, the closest uh, example I can think of, at least from my own experiences in the, in the tsunami relief effort in 2004, where I was involved. Um, and just remind us about that tsunami, what happened there and who was affected? Oh, in 2004, the, the tsunami uh, happened, I think it was uh, 20, 25th, 26th of uh, December, and it hit a big part of uh, Aceh, and that's where 
the Singapore for Armed Forces was um, committed to do some of the relief effort in Aceh. And I was involved in that relief effort and um, I recall uh, the, the information was lacking and we were trying to figure out what to do. Um, and we were working with civilian resources as well. And um, two issues I think I would say that coming up from there in terms of transition um, was this ability to hand off. I mean, as a military perspective, we provided the immediate response. We created access, we created the uh, road net uh, telecommunication uh, set up. And that. But we need to, to hand it off to somebody because the military were at that point in time, we were not able to commit for years because we don't have the capacity and the capability to do that. The civilian resource is the one that, uh, the, whether it be OCHA or, or WTO uh, or Oxfam, they can come in to do the reconstruction part of it. And I think that the seam in terms of handing over, that was the key. Yeah. Where we, need, we needed a, some kind of, a, I mean, it's a kind of afterthought, that some kind of framework, some kind of thinking uh, that we can both agree on uh, so at that point in time, we created what we call the CIMIC Coordination Centre. Yes. And that was kind of key and important from the very onset where we started the operation. Um, I think it was a few days into the operation and we decided to set up this centre. Where you allow communication to take place. Where you allow the various thinking and the various capability to bring on the table. And when we can kind of figure out together with the whole nation, okay, where do you need the needs? What are your needs? What are your priority? Yes. And it kind of, okay, we have that resource from the civilian side of the house and we can put it there where you need it to. Uh, I, I, yes, I think one of the things that I keep hearing again and again is that you have to plan for that transition out from the very first day that you come in and central coordination and opportunities for civil and military to be talking all the time from the start. Is that really the lesson you learned in art change? Yes, um, although we kind of figure and mother along, <laughs> along the way, but yes. uh, in afterthought, I'll, I'll say that that's the most important piece, that integration has to start out front, mm. not as an afterthought. Mm. Yeah. It's so... Another challenge is that personnel come and go. So when you learn a lesson, even if you do manage to put it into action the next disaster, what about the disaster after that and the disaster after that? How do you keep that corporate memory alive within your defence forces? Oh, that's, that's, that's a very interesting question. I think precisely for that reason, that's why the Centre for Army Lessons Learned was set up. Because the memory of the organisation is, is short, it's depending on who's um, still in an organisation and once that person leaves, the whole tacit knowledge, the audit lessons kind of, no, leave with them. So we are looking at databases, we are looking at system of how we can archive some of this more explicit knowledge, be able to put in some codified fashion, yes. they can put it into our database and people years after this can kind of search and retrieve them. Uh, I think the context will always be different, but the principles the, uh, the insights that we gain from each operation needs to be captured. And those are the more important pieces that you know, when, when the next disaster happens, you can fall back to that repository where you can pull out some of this. If I could share with you one more challenge, and then if there was another challenge it, that you would like to raise. But one challenge I feel I've learned at this conference is that there's either too much information or too little. So one of the challenges is gathering the information while events are happening so that you can, particularly if you're in a conflict situation and lives are at stake, but I guess also in disasters, gather the information quickly, learn the lessons and quickly get them back out to the people in the field. But there's also been an example at the conference from the Vietnam War where there were some academics going through piles of information, you know, all you know, decades later, and there was almost too much information. So information management is a, and, and assessment is a big part of this, isn't it? A big challenging part. Yes, I think in, in, um, in my own small little experience here in the Singapore Army, um, we have tons of information, tons of data. Yes. Um, but those data in my mind has to be contextualised. 
What does that mean, contextualize? To me, is that uh, contextualize is that if even if a battalion or even in a unit that go through a particular operations and he or she or that unit can say a thousand and one uh, lessons uh, they have identified or even lessons that they have put into action. But another unit that's going through maybe similar experience, he had, that unit needs to then take those information and say, what is of relevance to me? What it will be of useful to me when I do this operation? Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.